Hi, everybody. So today our focus is going to be a dual clean with me and review with me video because I just got a Roomba 677. So for those who don't know me in person, I have some serious shoulder problems and vacuuming is one of those uh, movements that really triggers some tremendous pain in my shoulder and in my forearm. So I've wanted one of these for so long. Let me tell you about the deal I got. So this Roomba 677 retails at Kohl's, which is where I got it, for $374.99. It was on sale, a pre-Black Friday sale, for $189.99. So it's already $185 off. I had a promo code and some other Kohl's. It wasn't Kohl's Cash, I don't think. But I had a promo code and something else. So it knocked off another $28.50. So the total was $156.50 before taxes and all that. And I had some gift cards. So I paid even less than that. I paid almost nothing for this Roomba. So I'm going to unbox it, play with it, and then I'm gonna give you a review on my thoughts on the Roomba. Okay, so we have the user manual, what looks like a filter, virtual wall barrier and batteries, plug, the docking station, and the Roomba. This is a really interesting sticker they have on here. It says, this robot contains an electronic and software interface that allows you to control or modify its behavior and remotely monitor its sensors. For software programmers interested in giving your iRobot new functionality, we encourage you to do so. Step one is gonna to be to set up the docking station. I gotta find out where I'm gonna plug that in. Two is to pull the battery tab out. I'll do that in a minute. Three looks like to dock it. Four is to let it charge for three hours. And five, set up the app. And then six, you can use it. So that's what I'm gonna do. while my new Roomba is charging. Let's go over some of the features that they have on the box in the instruction manual. So I've just been flipping through the instruction manual just to familiarize myself with the Roomba and its features so that I don't mess something up when it's all charged up and ready to go. Um, they have just pictures basically of the device itself in the little home base so that, you know, you can see all the parts that are there. They go over here how to position your home base. Mine is not positioned correctly, so I'm going to move it later. It's supposed to be a, a foot and a half on each side of the home base, and I don't have a table too close to it. Uh, four feet in front of the home base, which I have, and uh, at least eight feet from a virtual wall barrier. I don't have any virtual wall barriers put up yet. It also gives a note to remove excess clutter from floors before cleaning, clothing, toys, etc. Yeah, okay. This is gonna be the challenge in my house. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that it'll help motivate us to keep things off the floor that don't belong on the floor. So to begin cleaning, you can just push the clean button on the robot or you can do it in the app. Sounds really simple to me. I like him.
I got a notification that he was done cleaning. And so I'm gonna check how well he cleaned. So the spot by the back door that leads to the stairs, uh, he missed. Like you can see here, but that's okay. We'll just keep trying. I knew this would be a tricky spot because of the carpet here. Um, but the rest of the floor is just absolutely gorgeously cleaned. <laughs> like this is great. If you saw in the other, in, when he was cleaning, this is the area where we have our like boot trays and it was extremely dirty. I think it did a great job here. To send it back to its home base, you can either push dock on the Roomba or yeah, and it should go to its docking station. That sounds great. They also, this Roomba also has a spot clean function, which they say place the Roomba on top of localized debris and push the spot on the robot. Roomba will intensely clean the area by spiraling outward about three feet in diameter and then spiraling inward to where it started. I can't wait to try this feature. Also says a note, after each use, empty the bin and clean the filter. Cleaning the filter, so you empty the bin, pull the filter to remove, tap the filter against the rubbish container to clear debris and reinstall. Oh, that's all cleaning is. Okay, so it looks like cleaning is literally just taking your filter and like, and getting the stuff out. I thought you're gonna have to like wash it. Okay, that's fine. That's not bad, I, that's easy. Okay, so this robot also came with the dual mode virtual wall barrier. So this keeps a Roomba in places you want it to be cleaned and out of rooms you don't want it to be clean. And set it to block openings up to 10 feet. But one example that they do have here for this virtual wall is to do what's called a halo mode, which is when you put this in a special mode, so you just toggle it down to the halo part, um, and it will prevent uh, the Roomba from bumping into like, uh, like uh, dog bowls, like that's the example that they give here. Regular robot care. Recommended robot care is to keep the Roomba running at peak performance, which is what we want. We want it to work well. Um, here are, you can watch instructional care videos. If you notice a Roomba picking up less debris on your floors, empty the bin, clean the filter, clean the extractors. So this is interesting. So they have a chart that tells you how often you should clean these parts. I feel like this is gonna be more than I bargained for. We'll see. So you wanna clean the filter once a week or twice a week if you have pets and replace it every two months. You wanna clean the brushes once per week or twice a week if you have pets and replace them every six to 12 months. For the front caster wheel, you wanna clean it uh, once every two weeks and replace it every 12 months. And all three of the side brush, cliff sensors, and the charging contacts, you just want to clean them once per month. So there are definitely things that you're going to have to purchase um, for the Roomba, for maintenance for the Roomba. So that is good to know. We'll look up all that. This is a screenshot from the Roomba app that has the store. They have a lot of accessories and replacement parts. This is just a couple of them. I wanted to just to highlight the replenishment kit, which has filters, the little side spinny guy, brushes, and also a tool to help clean hair off of the brush. That is $50. A filter three pack is $25. And some side brushes, three of them, $15. And you can also get more uh, virtual walls for $60. Cleaning the brushes, open the brush guard by lifting the tabs. We'll demo all this. Remove and clean any hair and debris from the brushes and the brush bearings.
cleaning the front caster wheel. Pull firmly on the front wheel to remove the front caster assembly. Remove any debris from inside the wheel cavity. Spin the wheel by hand. If rotation is restricted, remove the wheel from its housing and push firmly to remove the axle and clear any debris or hair wrapped around it. Reinstall all parts when finished. Make sure the wheel clicks back into place. Good thing there are pictures and videos. So my shark that I have, I'll put that link to that review up here somewhere, has that special, I forget what you call it now, technology that keeps the hair from getting all tangled up in the spinny thing. And I love that because I, I have not had to once like untangle hair out of that at all. So this is going to be a challenge, I think, for the Roomba. I think this is going to be something that I get a little, mm. Clean the side brush. Use a small screwdriver to remove the screw. Pull the side brush to remove it from the robot. Remove any hair or debris and reinstall. Okay. Then you have to also clean the cliff sensors and charging contacts. Wipe all sensors and charging contacts with a clean, dry cloth. It has some troubleshooting instructions also. So it seems pretty straightforward on how to use it, but it appears to me that the maintenance for the Roomba is more than I had thought. Okay, so now my review of the Roomba. So I wrote down, We've used it for 17 cleaning jobs. Uh, its total job time has been eight hours and 15 minutes and the dirt event count is 773. I think I should probably be really embarrassed by that 773, but it is what it is. I'll start with the pros. It cleans really well. It cleans so good, so well. I am just blown away at how well it picks up dirt, sand on the floor, sugar that gets spilt in the kitchen. Like it cleans really well. Absolutely love its ability to clean. I have really dirty front entryway area. Um, I'll actually show you how dirty it is. So you can see that we're in the middle of construction here. So our walkway is really just sand and dirt. So we track all of this inside the house all the time. So you can see, like, we track in a lot of sand and dirt and mud, and the room was able to, like, clean it all up. And I'm eternally grateful for it for that because I wasted so much time uh, sweeping and vacuuming constantly. This is so easy just to set the robot and let it go. So I guess it actually brings me to a huge time saver. Having the Roomba is a massive time saver. It, I, I spend, like I said, I spend so much time sweeping and vacuuming that entryway alone that half the time I'd be like so tired or my shoulder would be so hurt and so sore and so inflamed that I wouldn't even bother sweeping the upstairs or I wouldn't bother sweeping the kitchen and then that gets all messy. With this, I can just set it, let it go. It saves a ton of time. The app, the app is super easy to use. There's not much to say there. It is simple, simple to use and navigate. I love it. Convenience, it is super convenient. It, it that This, I guess, goes along with uh, time saving, right? But it really is convenient just to be able to push a button on that thing or push a button in the app and let it go. Super convenient. Scheduling. That's definitely a pro. You can schedule it to clean whenever you want. You know, I had it set for a six o'clock and it just starts.
It's awesome. It just starts. Just schedule it. You don't have to think about it. You know your floors will get cleaned. The spot clean function. I love the spot clean function. I showed you the back entryway and it's that rug. It's the thing is we're in a temporary home right now because we're building our real home. And so I ha I didn't go buying, you know, real mud mats and stuff like that. We just use leftover carpet. Okay. Yeah, I know not the smartest move, but hey, it was money saving and we didn't care. We're going to throw it away when we're done, but it gets so dirty. Doing that spot clean function, it really cleans that up really well. I super, super, super love the spot clean function. Cons. So the one thing that I really dislike about the iRobot Roomba 677 is that my hair, my long hair gets that's on the floor, gets tangled up in the brushes. And I have to clean the brushes. I have been cleaning the brushes, I should say, once a day. Once a day, I'm trying to clean the brushes so that the hair doesn't get so tangled that it like stops the functionality of this thing. I don't know how much hair can be tangled before it would become a problem, and I don't want it to become a problem. That's the only con that I can come up with for this Roomba. Um, it's slightly inconvenient, I guess, that I have to like check the brushes and pull the hair out. But for me, when I'm, when I'm weighing, you know, the pros and cons of me using this Roomba or going back to sweeping and vacuuming, for me, especially with my shoulder injury and my forearm injury, it is a life saver for me. So the slight inconvenience of having to open up that, it's, it opens really easily, the little brush container to get the hair out of the brush. To me, it's well worth it for what the Roomba is doing for my life. So this, I don't feel this is a con, but I have read this before and I have seen this before in other people's videos about the Roomba is the noise. I don't feel that it's noisy at all. It's a vacuum cleaner and vacuum cleaners are going to make noise. They're just going to make noise. I don't feel like this is like extremely loud or, oh, it's so irritating. It's just not. To me, the, the sound doesn't bother me at all. If it's running upstairs, we cannot hear it downstairs. So overall, I highly recommend the iRobot Roomba 677. This is the only one I have. So I don't have another robot to compare it to. I know there are other models that uh, empty the waste bin for you right? That suck up the dirt. So you don't have to do that a lot. That might be super convenient if you have like a dirty home like I do. Um, for now, emptying the dustbin once a day doesn't bother me right now at all. Uh, it's pretty easy. My kids can do it too. It can just be a chore that my kids do. It's so easy. I can compare it to regular vacuuming. And the vacuum cleaner that I have is at Shark Navigator. And I've done a review on that before. And I can put a link to that up, up here. Um, to compare those two, because those are the two vacuum cleaners that I have, uh, the room is way more convenient because I can just set it and let it go and do its thing. And it does a really good job at cleaning. My shark, I love it. I adore it. Uh, the hair does not get tangled in my shark at all. That thing, I'll tell you, it has, I think it's called, was it Zero M Technology? Whatever that technology is in shark, I have never, never had to pull my hair like off of the bristles of the brushes. I don't know how, but I never have to. Like, so that's something that my shark, regular upright vacuum cleaner has over the Roomba. Um, but again, for me with my shoulder injury, moving the shark around is getting harder and harder for me. Bringing it up and down stairs is harder and harder for me. So for now, the way I am right now, our lifestyle right now, the Roomba wins big time um, for me. And that is my primary vacuum cleaner now. I will use my Shark Navigator to do our stairs because the Roomba cannot do stairs. We'll still use that to do the stairs. It comes apart really easily too. Um, so you can do that. But all in all, I'm going to be using my Roomba as my daily vacuum cleaner and my Shark as my backup and my stair vacuum cleaner. I also do use my Shark to vacuum upholstery. So my couch, the recliner, that's something that the Roomba can't do. I can't put the Roomba on the couch and have a vacuum. 
It can go under the couch, but it can't, can't go on the couch. So that's something that I would continue to use my upright vacuum cleaner for. So I hope this helped you get an idea as to how the Roomba works and if it could or could not work well for you in your home. Like I said, I really am enjoying it. I really do love it. Um, and I'm happy, really happy that I finally got one. So thank you for watching very much. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. You might like them. I do a lot of different cleaning videos. I like to test out disinfectants with petri dishes and see, see uh, which ones can actually kill bacteria. Uh, we're building a house. So there'll be all sorts of like how we're moving along in our house build. It's crazy. We live a crazy life. But thank you for watching this and have yourselves a great day.